I thought of a new name for um, this hairstyle. Mm -hmm. It's called the Orthodox Jew ponytail. Oh yeah. Because it's very reserved I at the see front, that. but party in the back. When Pitch Perfect came out in 2012, it seriously rocked everyone's world. Its humor was fresh and new, and we immediately wanted more of the Bellas. The series has become so popular that it has earned over $400 million worldwide, with Pitch Perfect 2 being the highest grossing musical comedy of all time. With the third and final movie coming out soon, I just had to make a video on the series. Here are 50 facts you didn't know about Pitch Perfect. Brittany Snow said that Rebel Wilson improvised most of her lines and would go on 20 minute tangents that would have the whole cast and crew in stitches. Because I have no... Oh, Chloe, don't worry. It's just God punishing you because you're a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Say Anything was originally going to be the movie Anna Kendrick and Skylar Astin were supposed to watch together, not The Breakfast Club. Pitch Perfect wasn't the first time Adam Devine and Rebel Wilson had worked together. Rebel was previously in an episode of Workaholics with him in the Juggalos episode, Straight Up Juggahos. But wait, there's no bra here, and I like that much better. This is so weird. My tits are telling me to sleep with you. Mm, I like what your tits have to say. During the hot tub scene in the treble house, a porno is playing on the TV in the background. Producer and actress Elizabeth Banks created the very strange fake porno for the scene. Aubrey's vomit was a concoction of pineapple juice, tomato juice, and chicken noodle soup. The actors on set said, strangely enough, that it smelled like cheese. Much like her character Lily, who says she was born with gills like a fish, Hannah Mae Lee's nickname growing up was Fish Lips. She said kids would call her that because the top of her lips go upward. The cast participated in a month-long singing and dancing boot camp to prepare themselves for the movie. The producers brought down the cast to Baton Rouge a month before filming so they could learn every dance move and song perfectly. Although never working together before the movie, Anna Kendrick and Skylar Astin share a connection with the prestigious performing arts camp Stage Door Manor in upstate New York. Astin attended the camp for multiple years and appeared in the documentary Stage Door, and Kendrick starred in Camp, which was based on and filmed at Stage Door Manor. Is this your first summer? No, I was here last year. Remember? We were a night mother together. Oh. The rip-off scene originally had 17 songs instead of 8. Screenwriter Kay Cannon soon realized that that many songs would never fit in the film's budget. The scene was shot at 3 in the morning in an old, empty outdoor pool in the middle of winter. Skylar Astin told Movie Viral, There were no places to keep cast members' chairs or to keep warm, so we bonded a lot that night. Shorty, get down, good lord. Woo! Baby, got them open all over town. Strictly bitch, you don't play around, cover much ground, got game by the pound. The storyline between Bumper and Fat Amy was not in the script. Adam Devine and Rebel Wilson would improvise during their scenes together, and Adam would often try to kiss her. This led to Adam and Wilson to create a backstory for their two characters and their relationship. Oh. Just kidding. Would you like to have sex later? No! Okay, you said no, but you winked. So that's a no then? 100% no. Aston was cast in the film because the producers were looking for someone who had a John Cusack vibe. According to producer Max Handelman, they wanted awkward but not a geek, but not so cool that you're not rooting for him. I think they nailed it. You're one of those acapella girls, I'm one of those acapella boys, and we're gonna have acapella children. It's inevitable. You're really drunk right now. I don't no. think you're going to remember any of this. I'm not drunk at all. You're just blurry. Esther Dean, who performs S&M, actually wrote the song for Rihanna in real life. Despite being an accomplished songwriter, this served as the first live-action acting role for Esther Dean, who plays Cynthia Rose. At one point, while Becca is attending the activities fair and checking out the booth for the DJs, a game of Quidditch can be seen going on in the background. 
Every cast member had to successfully sing a song for their audition. Adam Devine chose the Family Matters theme song, while Rebel Wilson went for Lady Gaga's Edge of Glory. A special screening of the film was held on September 25th, 2012 at the LSU Student Union Theater because parts of the movie were filmed on LSU's campus. The turnout for the screening was so great that only a little more than half of the students in line got in to see the movie. The producers saw that there were more students wanting to see the film and allowed a second showing immediately following the first, that way everyone could have a chance to see the movie. This is the second collaboration between Elizabeth Banks and John Michael Higgins, the first being Fred Claus in 2007, where they played elves together. Esther Dean's character, Cynthia Rose, is named after a child mentioned in the Prince song, Starfish and Coffee. All of us were ordinary compared to Cynthia Rose. She always stood in back of the night, a smile beneath her nose. The name Fat Amy is based off of a nickname Amy Poehler used on herself while she was pregnant. In the film, Becca claims that Vader means father in German. It does, sort of. The German word for father is Vater, not Vader. However, Vader does mean father in Dutch. Despite all playing college-age students, Rebel Wilson, Anna Camp, and Adam Devine were all at least eight years older than their co-stars. The German dance members went through a two-week boot camp to get in shape for the movie. They did it not just to learn the dance choreography, but to also get the stamina to do the scenes over and over again. The Pitch Perfect movies often have songs that haven't even been released to the public yet. They want the movies to be as up to date in the music world as possible, so they will request unreleased songs from singers to put into the movies. That's why whenever a Pitch Perfect movie comes out, it always has the best new music. Kay Cannon, the writer of the movies, said in an interview that Fat Amy getting hit with a burrito was inspired by an incident that happened to her in real life. She told Collider that when she was in college, she was jogging with her boyfriend at the time when a car of guys threw a burrito at her. She said that she fell over screaming because she actually thought that she had been shot. I've been shot! I've been shot! Help me. Real acapella groups were used during filming, including Pentatonix, who won the third season of The Sing Off. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. The first time the other actors heard newcomer Haley Steinfeld's singing voice was her audition scene for the Bellas in the movie. Brittany Snow says she was completely shocked at how soulful it was for someone her age. I got all I need when I got you and I look around me and see a sweet light. You're getting me, getting me through the night. The team recruited professional a cappella musicians and professional beatboxers to be in the movie. They found many of them through their YouTube channels. It's pretty cool to think that one day you're just beatboxing on your computer and the next day you're invited to be in a movie. Rebel Wilson really wanted Demi Lovato to join the Bellas. She went as far as to make her an offer, but Lovato had to decline to concentrate on her tour commitments at the time. Anna Kendrick wanted to sing a different song with Snoop Dogg during his cameo. She said she asked if she could sing something cooler than the song that she sang because as she put it, it's essentially a kid's song. She said in an interview, it was a seriously embarrassing day to have to sing a Christmas carol in front of Snoop Dogg, who is arguably the coolest man on the planet. The complete category list for the riff-off is pretty hilarious. The full list of categories are Ladies of the 80s, Songs About Sex, Black Michael Jackson, White Michael Jackson, Christian Rock, Overplayed Black Eyed Peas songs, and TV theme songs, among others. 
Hana Mei Lee has her own fashion line. She's designed outfits for different musicians, and one of the jackets she designed was even in the first Pitch Perfect poster. Her official clothing site is Hanamon, which translates to one in Korean. The website is honestly pretty crazy. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Snoop Dogg's daughter is a huge Pitch Perfect fan. He told the producers that he really wanted to be in the movie because a cameo in the sequel would make him look cool in his daughter's eyes. What a sweet dad. Rebel Wilson only became an actress after she contracted malaria in Africa. While lying in a hospital bed, Rebel suffered from hallucinations, one of which was that she was an actress. When Rebel recovered, she returned to her native Australia to become an actress. While Skylar Astin and Anna Kendrick play the movie's romantic leads, Skylar Astin and Anna Camp are actually married in real life. Skylar Astin said in an interview that when the first movie was being filmed, he and his co-stars would go out dancing after filming and hit up local bars and dance all night long together. He said that while filming the second and third movies though, they couldn't go out dancing anymore because now everyone knows who they are and they'd get recognized too easily. Lula Borg thought his casting was a hoax. He said that he received an email that said there was a role for him in Pitch Perfect 2 that was a German role, and he thought it was double, quadruple fake. Then he found out it was real and that all he needed to do was amplify his Germanness even more. It's interesting how the Pitch Perfect dudes and ladies found me. It was really actually the internet. Um, I know that somebody just send some emails, some links. We're looking for a German person. Hey, what about Flula? He makes weird videos. Here's some from YouTube. And then, boom, I auditioned. Had no expectation. I auditioned with some pajamas and a boombox. And then I had lunch. And that was it. But then, you know, three weeks later, phone call, ding dong, ring, ring, let's do it. It was great. They didn't actually go to Copenhagen for the World Championships. Copenhagen was actually the French Quarter in New Orleans. Rebel Wilson trained for five weeks for the aerial stunt sequence. She said in an interview that she didn't think she could do it, but she knew if she didn't do it that they probably couldn't get a stunt double that was the same size as her and the scene wouldn't be in the movie. So she decided to do it herself and train for five weeks to make it happen. Okay, she has no underwear on. We have a commando situation. There is a commando situation on stage. One of the most iconic shots of the first film is when Becca auditions for the Barden Bellas. The original song she was going to sing was going to be I'm a Little Teacup, but Anna Kendrick wanted to do cups instead, so she performed it for the producers on set. Everybody loved it, and thus it was included in the movie. A makeout scene between Rebel Wilson and Adam Devine had to be cut short because her pants were see-through. They had a steamy makeout scene that lasted over seven minutes long, but after they filmed it, they noticed that her pants were a bit see-through, so a lot of that scene had to get cut out. In your voice inside me, I see your face everywhere, still you say we belong to Thunder. Natalie Imbruglia's torn was a result of improv in the tent. Brittany Snow said in an interview that in between takes of them camping, they didn't get out of the tent, so they were just basically hanging out in there. She said that Rebel went on an improv for a really long time, and that she then decided to sing Natalie Imbruglia's Torn, and it ended up being a part of the movie. The Green Bay Packers are huge fans of the franchise. They would even go into the actors' trailers between breaks and show them videos of them doing some of the dance numbers from the first movie. They each had their own part and knew it completely. Amy <laughs> Poehler and Kristen Wiig were considered for Elizabeth Banks' role. Rebel Wilson was originally going to use an American accent for the film, but after director Jason Moore heard her native Australian accent, he asked her to use her regular voice for Fat Amy instead. A mini scene between Adam Devine and Skylar Astin was cut because they couldn't stop laughing while filming it. In the scene, Skylar calls him out for being slightly inappropriate, and Adam blows up at Skylar. 
There's a point where Adam rips his shirt off and was cross-eyed yelling at Skylar, and it didn't make it into the movie because neither one of them could stop laughing. An extra storyline between Jesse and Becca was shot, but didn't make it into the film. Skylar Askins said that it had a very telling evolution of Jesse. He didn't want to give any more information on it though, in case they decide to use it in a future Pitch Perfect movie. Although he did say that there was a little bit of a life decision between Jesse and Becca. Could it be a pregnancy? Or marriage? Maybe we'll find out when Pitch Perfect 3 comes out. Rebel Wilson doing the mermaid dance in the first movie was improv, it was not in the script. She says that when you're filming a movie, there are usually tape marks on the ground to tell you where to stand. She said that the writers loved her mermaid dance so much that they kept it in the movie, but to do so, they had to digitally remove the tape out of the shot to be able to use it. Rebel says that her mermaid dance ended up costing them thousands of dollars to use in the movie, but that they said it was completely worth it. While filming the first movie, the cast would join tailgate parties at LSU and hang out with the students when they were done filming at the end of the day. Hannah Mae Lee studied at Otis College of Art and Design in LA. She originally wanted to be a fashion designer like her mom, who runs her own fashion boutique in Korea. Elizabeth Banks and John Michael Higgins filmed all of their scenes in one day. The screenwriter of the movie actually asked Rebel Wilson to audition for the film through Facebook. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you're all having a really nice winter. I'm going to be posting a lot in the next few weeks so I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Until next time, peace you guys!